One photoelectric effect. The photoelectric effect occurs when light shining onto a piece of metal causes electrons to be given off. Here we have this metal plate here, and it's called cathode because it's connected to the negative terminal of the, this battery. That's anode, this metal plate here, because it's connected to the positive terminal of the battery. And when light shines on this plate, some of the electrons in here will get enough energy to escape from the plate. And so there's a cloud of electrons here, and they start to drift across to this to this anode, so a small current is formed. The effect is used in a photoelectric cell to produce a small electric current. These cells are used for such things as burglar alarm and TV cameras. Photo cell. This diagram here shows what a real photo cell looks like. Cathode in the shape of a curved metal plate and node just a point. And this is a symbol for a photo cell. So if we connect photo cell to a very sensitive emitter and we shine light onto the cathode, some electrons will come off the cathode and start to drift across the anode and they'll start to flow around a circuit. Some historical background to this photoelectric effect. At the end of the 19th century, Classical electromagnetic wave theory thought of light waves as being like water waves, like water waves like this, and that's the amplitude. The wave's intensity or the wave's energy was directly proportional to the square of the amplitude A. So if you double the amplitude, you will increase the energy, energy four times. When the photoelectric effect was studied, the results were different from what was expected based on the electromagnetic wave theory we looked at on the previous slide. This was what was expected and this was what actually happened. The first one is a brighter light will cause electrons of greater kinetic energy to be emitted because brighter light means more energy therefore electrons will have got more energy. But this is what actually happened. Brighter light caused more electrons to be emitted, yes, but the energy of each, each electron did not change. Second point, if a dim light was used, it would take longer before any electrons received enough energy to escape from the metal, from the cathode metal. But what actually happened was, with UV light, even the faintest light cause some electrons to be emitted instantly with no time delay. Third one, the frequency and therefore color of the light would not affect the energy of the emitted electrons. But what, have, what actually happened was the higher the frequency of the incoming light or incident light, the greater the energy of the emitted electrons. Below a certain frequency, no electrons were emitted. So there's a minimum frequency that we should have for uh, emitting electrons. Albert Einstein was able to explain the photoelectric effect by proposing that electromagnetic radiation, simply the light for the sun, comes in fixed packets or quanta of energy called photons. This was the beginning of quantum theory. Each photon or each packet of light has a fixed amount of energy depending on the frequency of the radiation. The amount of energy E of each photon is proportional to its frequency. So the formula is e equal to H times F. H is a constant called Planck's constant. It's got a fixed number. Also, speed of light is C the speed of light equal to frequency times wavelength. And you rearrange it to make F the subject 
and substitute that into here. So this formula now becomes like this. Hc divided by lambda. A simple example is the energy of a photon of blue light of frequency that much is using the equation there. Is that much. Photoelectric effect. First of all, these are the seven colors of the rainbow. Red here, violet there. Red light photon has a least energy. Violet light photon has the most energy. Now we come to this diagram here. That's a metal foil. That's a red light photon with the least energy. That's a blue light photon which has more energy. A red light photon hasn't got enough energy to dislodge an electron. Whereas a blue light photon has enough. So this electron is given off after the um, this photon hits the metal foil. Here it says using brighter blue light means more blue photons and therefore more electrons are emitted or given off. Not so with Red light doesn't matter how bright a red light you use, you will never dislodge any electrons because of the size of the red light photons being too small. Before the idea of light particles or photons, light was always thought of as a wave. Properties of light, such as refraction, diffraction, interference could only be explained using a wave theory. Wave theory, however, failed to explain the photoelectric effect. Physicists now think of photons as a combination of wave and particle properties called a wave packet. A wave packet has a fixed amount of energy, like a particle, but has a frequency and a wavelength, like a wave. Each metal has a minimum energy needed for an electron to be emitted or to be given off. And this minimum amount is called the work function of phi of that metal. So for an electron to be given off, the energy of the photon HF must be greater than the work function phi. And the excess energy becomes the kinetic energy of the emitted electron. Just use some fictitious figures. Let's say a photon of light has 8 joules of energy and the work function of a metal is 5 joules. So there is enough energy to dislodge an electron from the metal with 3 joules of energy left over. And the 3 joules of energy will become the kinetic energy of the dislodged electron. The work functions phi of some common metals. You can see here that it is much easier to release electrons from sodium and calcium than from aluminium and iron.